Uh, so we're not really looking to, to, to make a lot of money with, uh, with the event. We're just looking to create something that actually hasn't really been defined yet. We're just, the ball is rolling right now and we're going to see where it turns and how it builds. And eventually, I think our goal was to um, integrate the community as uh, purely as we can and, you know, that it resembles us. Hey, what's up, Vox and Hops heads? I'm Matt, the vocalist of Cryptopsy and the host of the Vox and Hops Metal Podcast, brought to you by Sound Talent Media. I hope you've been having a glorious week. I most certainly have been. Now, before we jump into today's episode, I would just like to ask you to follow the Vox and Hops Metal Podcast on the podcast platform of your choice. For more, and I'm also asking you to tell a friend about the podcast. If there's someone in your life that enjoys metal or craft beer, make sure to let them know that the Vox and Hops Metal Podcast exists. You can tell them that there are over 290 episodes with some of the world's best metal musicians available for them to listen to right now. If you were to encourage one of your friends to become a future Vox and Hops head, that would be something that I would truly appreciate. Now, today's episode is a unique one. Last Saturday on September 11th, I spent the entire day at a very cool traveling beer fest here in Montreal. This was the third installation of this festival. That festival is called Beer Garden. To make this event even more special, I invited my good friend Danny Marino of The Agonist, who was the very first guest that I invited on Vox and Hops to come and be my co-host. We had an absolute blast. We were there with the Vox and Hops crew, Mad Love. Huge shout outs to Ryan Andrade for filming a whole bunch of stuff and to France Hattin for taking a bunch of amazing pictures. And of course, a whole bunch of love to Jessica Buckingham, the producer of Vox and Hops, who was there to make sure everything ran smoothly. We had a blast. We had a whole bunch of crazy cool conversations with a bunch of amazing humans. Get ready, everyone. This is Vox and Hops episode number 294. <laughs> Hey, what's up, everyone? Today, I'm with Dave Roberge, and we are at Beer Garden, Montreal. I am just so damn stoked to be with you, Dave. This festival, a traveling beer fest. I am joined by Danny Marino of The Agonist, my good friend, the very first guest of Vox and Hops. How are you doing? Let's start with just a how are you doing, guys? I'm super stoked to be here, and with Dave and the organizer and all the breweries. I love all the breweries that are here, and I'm super uh, honored that you invited me to join along for this. Oh, thanks, guys. Yeah, I'm honored to have you too. I'm just so excited to be with you, the man, the dude that came up with this idea. Take me to where this came from. Where did you come up with the coolest beer traveling festival idea ever? What, from A to Z, I want to hear the story of Beer Garden. Well, it's pretty nice of you to say that it's the coolest. I, I, we like it. We were having fun for sure. And that's pretty much how it started. Uh, we wanted to have fun. We wanted to have an event that represented what we would enjoy, right? So uh, Marc-André, I'm not the only one behind the idea and the rest of the, uh, the team that we build together. Uh, we just fine-tuned the whole thing. And <laughs> actually, we're still fine-tuning it, guys. <laughs> but uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's a growing project that just uh, basically offers a wide variety of uh, breweries that decide that they want to represent the best way they can the beers in our menu uh, that, that define them. And uh, we were really happy to have the response that we did. Uh, we just, we took a while, it took about a year to create those, let's say, contacts and to build the concept itself of having a menu that goes with a pretty good variety, give a balance to it all, and a very strict amount of people that we wanted to have on our site to keep a fairly good control. We're still, you know, fine tuning some of the lineups here and there, but we're trying, we're doing our best. Um, so we're not basically trying to be exclusive as we're just trying to offer a good service for few people and uh, so the, the the idea of the garden was just having that service combined with those beers that we had in mind and those brewers combined with fun music and stuff like that and just basically like i said at the beginning it's an event that we wanted for us so the selection of the beers it's very it's top notch speaking as a beer nerd it's like you and Marc Andre seem to really know your stuff. So, so what is it like? Are you actually like super beer geeks, or more just like business guys that got into the beer business? Or uh, Marc Andre is uh, more the beer geek. Let's say I I'm doing quotes right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I'm I'm a 
you're a fan, but I, I mostly enjoy the business behind it. I like the storytelling side of it all. I really enjoy what the brews have to tell us about their story, where they're coming from, where they're going, what products they're doing and why. Uh, and Marc-André loves that point, that, that, that part too, but he's, uh, he's mostly the guy behind the beer selection. And the reason that we were actually able to do those kinds of lineup of lineups uh, is actually because we talked uh, to a good friend of mine in the beginning who is Marc-André from Bacanada. And uh, he gave us some pointers. He uh, introduced us to some of those guys too. And you know, we we love having fun. We like we respect them all. And I think it just it clicked. It's a good community, and they they enjoyed the vibe that we wanted to bring. So eventually, we just ended up having. Uh, good referrals, I think. Absolutely incredible. Incredible. A dude not from the craft beer scene having the most hyped up lineup of the summer. I sent it to him and he was like, dude, I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> he told me like what, listen, I have this idea. There's this beer garden thing and there's brewers are going to be here. I'm like, yes, I'm in. I don't know what your idea is, but I'm, I'm in. Well, I, that's what I think is interesting because you don't come from the craft beer industry whatsoever. Was there any backlash for that? Having someone coming from outside of the beer world coming in to organize a craft beer festival, did you feel any backlash from existing festivals? Uh, no, not from the existing f festival. But we're not trying to do any competition or anything. So, And I'm not even sure that we can really relate to any other kind of festival right now. That's why we want it to be so, like, I, I would say different, right? Or uh, And it, it wouldn't have been from them. It would have been maybe from the community that are, already exists, from the brewers, let's say, like, who are you to try and organize this? But actually, the, the basic principle of the beer garden is uh, more to put them in the spotlight than us and is going to be actually shown more and more throughout the, the new editions. Uh, we were just, you know, we're doing the learning curve right now of our operations, but basically in the end, we're just trying to be filling some kind of gap that there was. And not to say that, you know, there was something to be filled, but I think obviously there was room for our type of event or our, our idea. And it's just, it fits. It wants to show a different type of event. So everybody's stoked. It's definitely working because every one of your events have been sold out. Uh, every block sells out because you have to do it in blocks because of the pandemic. Uh, I think it's incredible. Vox and Hops is all about hanging out with my metal friends most of the time, talking about their lives, music, and craft beer, but this is a special event. Uh, so I am interested in what you're drinking. Tell everyone what you're drinking today, and then me and Danny will present our beers. Well, uh, it's it might be a little wink to our friends from Val Morin from the first event we did, uh, so it's not part of the lineup today. Uh, it's um, it's a pale ale that they did. It's one of their best. It's uh, made with Nez and Sauvage. That's the only hop they use in it, in that one. Uh, and it's, yeah, it's very clean, very well done, very good, good beer. So uh, I swing by there often to just say a quick hello and have a, have a chat. Uh, and they gave me a few beers. We shared some yesterday with, uh, <laughs> with the guys that stuck around after the bought one. Yeah, it's good fun. It's good beer. More than some, apparently. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we had a good time, man. I'm actually pretty impressed with the pace of... Uh, speech I'm having right now. <laughs> <laughs> you're doing very well. well. We'll wrap up with what your hangover cure is later. Yeah. What beer are you drinking, Danny? I am drinking the Assemblage Framboise from Missorum, which is unbelievably good. I was very surprised because it's 9%. <laughs> but it's like super easy to drink, fruity, sour, nice, you know, so very good on their end. You know why it's 9%, right? The Assemblage is made with Associate Secrète. They're, uh, they're gin. Oh, really? Really? Yeah. Oh, shit. That's a, that's the new dimension to Assemblage, mm -hmm. putting spirits. It's <laughs> Way to go. I'm on uh, La Ferme. It's a, re it's a strawberry, right? Uh, rhubarb. Rhubarb, yes. It's delicious. But I am interested in what you learned. Uh, this is the third event. Uh, what have you learned throughout this the most? What is the biggest thing that you've learned? What were the biggest mistakes that you had to um, quickly fix for number two and then on number three? Uh, and we're still going with that improvement. It's the lineup for sure. Uh, mm -hmm. Meaning not the lineup of beers, uh, the lineup to get the beers, <laughs> to, to get access to your beers. Yeah, we um, the, the best event we want to do, and I, I think it's going to be like that even for the next years after pan the pandemic, it's not a, uh, the, the reason we're having 250 people per block and it's blocks. It's not a pandemic thing. It's actually the what we the want concept. to do. The concept. Yeah, yeah, it is. 
Um, Intimate, yeah. exclusive. Yeah. You had to be there. I like these events. Yeah. yeah. So uh, because we're trying to make it a little bigger, and you know, we added some uh, seating. Uh, now we're we were able to pump up to 250, but we saw yesterday that actually 250 people uh, compared to Quebec, which was about like 200. Uh, it's a big difference for the lineup, and uh, I would say for sure, man, that's the most, uh, uh, the, the, the biggest thing that we need to improve. And you see, today it's not at all the same. We we adapt you changed very yesterday quickly to today. No, it's the same number of people today. Okay. It's still 250, but there's not a lot a lineup. So okay. it's just we need to adapt. But we see the solution every time we have a problem. But the lineup, the thing is, once it's started, there's no way to kill a lineup with the structure that we've had. You know, we just we can't. We can rush it. We can do our best, but it's not going to be easy. So we just need to show people a good time. And what we've done, we cracked a few beers in the lineup. Okay, so when you're talking about lineup, I guess you're not talking about the lineup of beers. You're talking about people actually standing and waiting in yeah, line. Yeah, Got you're it. asking the the biggest issue. I think that that'd be it. I think if your biggest issue is that there's way too much demand for you to handle, then you're doing something right. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. I think eventually we'll uh, like we're filming a lot of what we're doing right now. We have a, a part of our team that films and documents and has interviews, a bit like you guys, but way more uh, images and stuff like that. And uh, we really want to show that at the end of the year. So maybe that will be one of our challenges to show the people that we're actually more than just an event. We're going to be uh, informing them of what we've learned and what we've actually captured throughout some webisodes at the end of the, of the summer. That's a great idea. And I know that you come from event planning. Talk to us about that, um, about your past, uh, your previous experiences, which is why Beer Garden is such a success, thanks to those experiences. Uh, it actually goes pretty far back, man. I, like, we used to have... Um, my parents had the house that was a bit out of the city and uh, we were good to have parties in it. <laughs> so it, I think it started all the way back there, honestly, hosting fun parties with buddies and stuff like that. And eventually it's transformed into a, a business. Yeah. Uh, a few years back, I did a business that wanted to do more team building oriented events but you know those type of events sometimes turn into a party too yeah. there's booze <laughs> so from those events eventually we just said yeah well next step for me would be to do again a party and let's do a business with those parties that would represent us and now we're like i really enjoy the craft beer so let's do something with that right uh so these events uh, what would be the most uh, notable thing that you organized before beer garden pretty much those big team buildings man like uh the company i, I had before we uh we organize private uh team building adventures or whatever it's called amazing and experiences and uh yeah it was it was about the same basic principle you know we had like 400 people coming in and it was like a barbecue party with games and challenges and stuff like that and we were actually in charge of building those games we uh the sh we had a shop uh that took care of building the giant team building games like a huge baby foot arena for wow. humans to walk in and no you're, way. you're actually the player that's insane yeah. i'm still involved with those guys i was uh, gonna i was gonna ask yeah. are you still doing that yeah. well you know obviously the pandemic hit us uh a bit and um but i was i just had a kid when just before the pandemic really I congrats a father yeah thanks and uh at that same time uh, my partners and i were just talking about you know i think it was my time to move on to something else i did what i had to do it, w it gotten big actually it was a fairly big company and i decided to to move on to another passion project and the time that i had uh with my child at the beginning the time that i had being a business oriented guy i like that a lot you know i'm I really like projects. So I had uh, a few time with uh, myself in my brain. <laughs> so, and some craft beers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so the pandemic just uh, officialized the transition. Amazing. That sounds extremely exact same as me. It's like we're touring musicians. So obviously a pandemic put everything on hold. Absolutely. At the same time, I also had my first child oh, right yeah. at the start of the pandemic. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, it was like bittersweet you get the time yeah. but at the same time it's like you're so used to go 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 all the time event 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 that it's like how do i now change around for that but um, it was crazy what it did for everybody man for most people and i'm glad that some of us 
actually found a, a way to spin it in a good way. Right? So what was the moment that like craft beer became like, this is what I'm going to do? Like that with the switch? Well, I don't know. I'm not exactly sure when it happened, but uh, when I was uh, four years ago, I would say I started trying out the beers from Bacanada before they officially opened. And Because you're friends with Marc André. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And um, I, I got into it pretty much uh, at that point, I would say more seriously. I'm a very curious guy by nature. So whenever something catches my attention, I get pretty... I would say even obsessed sometimes, <laughs> but I, me too. Uh, <laughs> so uh, curiosity made me uh, realize what actually craft brewing uh, represented, and for me, you know, it's good stuff. It tastes good, and it gets you a little bit whoop whoop. So uh, why not? Why not enjoy it while it's uh, it's something? It's a business, right? And honestly, I'm not gonna say. I know it sounds a little bit kitschy, but it's so true. The guys in this business, so far, from my experience, are just awesome. Hard working artists. It's why Vox and Hops works. It's the same type of uh, drive, passion. You're doing this not for money. You're doing it because you love it, and you love the industry. You love the products. You love the community. It's the same thing, whether you're at a show in a mosh pit or you're at a craft beer fest. It's the same type of love that's going on in a different yep. atmosphere yeah. and a different way of expressing Being it. a part of an independent artist underground community, yeah. you cannot succeed if you're an asshole. <laughs> because <laughs> you have to be very social and amic amicable with everyone in your scene because everything grows on each other and everyone goes on each other's back to grow together. And it's just like, if you're an asshole, you're so not going to get anywhere. It's actually funny, man. I didn't really, I didn't, I didn't think of it that way. Well, it's all word of mouth, yeah, too, right? Yeah. Oh, so yeah, it is. It, is. it actually seems like kind of high school at some point. A hundred percent. Yeah, it's yeah. like yeah. you know. But I, when I remember my high school, I used to host parties. You? So, so you were you were the guy hosting the party. So you were the you were the fucking cool kid. No, I, I would not say that. <laughs> Once you started hosting the parties, you became the cool kid. Oh well, I moved out pretty quickly. Actually, I I got my own apartment so I can do my own parties afterwards. Really? But yeah, I moved out. I was like 17. <laughs> <laughs> But um, when I was in high school, it was mostly just having fun, having fun, having fun. And some of that fun were in parties. I, I wouldn't say, well, honestly, I don't even remember having to define what being cool or part of the cool crew or whatever. Actually, I didn't really live that different differentiation when I was in high school because so many people hung out together. And it actually feels like that. Uh, but, you know, there's little stories here and there and <laughs> little, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> kind of why also it reminds me of that and we in the garden try to just be very neutral we do our thing we just want to put those guys who make an effort through our events and you know just have a good time there's enough problems and complications elsewhere for us to be part of that we just want to really be an added value and oh, I think you've done something amazing here something that is really unique that you have brought to a beer festival which I've never seen before is what's happening right now you've dedicated a space for podcasters to come in one podcast per block to record interviews with uh, people that are at the festival why did that happen why is that important to beer garden same reason that the beers are and the brewers are and the sorry I'm not wearing the right shirt the other <laughs> shirt I was wearing before <laughs> It's an artist who did the, the, the art that's on it. And, you know, so all parts of the industry, um, we want it to be part of the garden. You know, the event, yeah, we organize it, but it is a nonprofit. And I'm not going to show you the numbers, but it really is. <laughs> so um, it's, uh, it just means that we're in it for the fun and for the long run. And right now, every part of the industry has its place with us. Uh, especially if it fits and the people are nice and we just had a chat on the phone you and I same that happened with Chris from uh, Hops and Bros and hell yeah yeah my know, boy PA exactly so when it clicks it's just come along man we have everything you need I think so well meaning the bus and <laughs> then bring your stuff <laughs> I think it's amazing I think yeah. it's truly amazing you mentioned nonprofit. Uh, I've heard from people that organize festivals mm -hmm. that the first five years of running a festival you will be in the red Is that what's going on here? Uh, do you see something, a Big profit time, coming up in the future? Is that something that you imagine happening? What does well, the future hold for Beer Garden? Two questions in one. Yeah. Uh, Marc-André and I are the financial backup of this project. We both have things on the side. I'm involved with uh, commercial real estate on the side. So it's just we decided to do this uh, with no stress, no, accept uh, no expectation for uh, to be a very... Uh, money wise whatever uh, so 
we're not really looking to to, to make a lot of money with uh, with the event. We're just looking to create something that actually hasn't really been defined yet. We're just the ball is rolling right now, and we're gonna see where it turns and how it builds. And eventually, I think our goal was to uh, integrate the community as uh, purely as we can, and you know that it resembles us. And then uh, eventually, if the thing I was talking about earlier, the the inform uh, information, the the shots that we're doing right now that we're trying some to do some promo like videos, episodes, some wrap up videos. If it gets to be like a season with some really episodes let's say like you call it complete episodes like 22 minutes with stuff like that and we just distribute it in some way i don't know that's one of the ways we could go if we want to stay really independent and focus on the events in each case right now the formula actually works to have the staff that you see with us to be paid so that's one of the main like we don't get paid but, they get but they're paid. all getting paid yeah, right now for Amazing. sure man. good for you yeah so, so it's we, not volunteer base well we get some friends who offer we're not gonna say no we had the girl right there she's, uh, <laughs> she's a friend she's offering she's yeah, I mean, just give me a couple beers but yeah all the other staff they're paid and that was a big part of our mission we just wanted to do a very circular Uh, economy with uh, what goes in it goes to pay everybody and then eventually if it works out i think the numbers are good enough for us to reimburse the investment in about three years i'd say okay and then i think in three years we can define what will become of the garden in full wise or whatever wise uh future of the garden is it always going to be outside i don't know that's a good question man you uh, have a snow event yeah, like everybody says hill. that. But I'm, I'm hoping the, the to... beer. The beer cut goes through like an ice thing and, <laughs> yeah. and holds it. Yeah, it could be from a cask, and it gets cold by going through an ice sculpture. What you're saying right now, those kind of ideas, <laughs> that's actually where we want to head for sure. Like once the community is there and it backs us, and we're sure to have like to have all our events pretty much sold out every time we release one because it's. Well, well, they well made and the experience fun over and over. Uh, we're gonna get more and more creative, man, because we're sure that the budget that is set for it is gonna be meet, is gonna be met. And then, you know, I think uh, doing a snow event for me personally, I know Marc Andre thinks about it a lot, but I'm trying to get away in winter. I want to be in Costa Rica, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, we we do live in Montreal. It could be like a massive blizzard that day, and that would be an interesting event. Yeah. <laughs> It's a Vox and Hops episode. We have to talk about metal. Please. Uh, I would love to hear about your experience with metal. Have you ever gone to a metal show? Did you ever listen to metal? What is your metal journey? Uh, that's cool. Um, yes, I have. I'm not like the most metal guy you'll meet, obviously. But, um, and I don't really know a lot about it, but I enjoy it. And when I was younger, uh, we do a lot of referrals to my young age, man. Um, That's some Vox and Hops that go deep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, I used to go to a lot of metal shows. I enjoy it very much. And, uh, even yesterday we, uh, we have some buddies from Sudden Waves who came and did a live show for about 30 minutes. It was just a pop-up surprise. Amazing. Yeah. I wouldn't say like it was uh, the, the, the thing that we said, like for sure, everybody's going to be super stoked, but we like it. So, and the garden is supposed to represent what we want. So Absolutely. So let, go with the guys and try to have fun. It was personally, I loved it. Was yeah. there a band when you were like a teenager that was like the CD was in your disc man kind of thing that you can for remember? For hardcore, I wouldn't say so, man. Yeah, I enjoyed a lot of music that and I really have a shitty memories for names <laughs> yeah. so I just I enjoy music and I can say like hey I like that song and I right. can say like that I'm not a big I don't know a lot of specific bands so I won't try and pretend that's okay that's cool <laughs> that's cool don't, don't bother being fake one last question let's wrap this up you're a busy guy you're at your own festival you got lots to do you woke up this morning Yeah. Feeling like you enjoyed yourself yesterday, as does happen to us when we're on tour, Danny. Yeah. Um, it's very similar to tour. It is. This, it's It, like doing a festival tour in the summer, but which me and absolutely. Matt have done. And yeah. this is our only fest this year, so I'm very happy. Yeah. But, uh, you know, sometimes you wake up and you feel like shit and you got a hangover. So what is your hangover cure, Dave? Uh, I think this is good. <laughs> as he points to yeah. his beer. Yeah. <laughs> poison cure <laughs> um yeah no i think that's that's probably it honestly beer and sunglasses beer and sunglasses that'd be a good shirt slogan beer and sunglasses hangover cure emergency pack <laughs> i'll try this salty thing or that pickle juice all these things and then the hair of the dog always ends up working best <laughs> it's really what it is from experience you need to stop after though 
<laughs> because it just delays the hangover and it gets much, much worse. Yeah. So I've been saying a lot on the podcast recently. Dave, thank you so, so much hanging out with me and Danny, talking about your life, talking about music, talking about craft beer, talking about beer garden. Long live beer garden. This is amazing. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks. Cheers, man. Thanks, you guys. What's up, everyone? Today we are back with Vesa Menar of Misorum Brassatorium. I got Danny Marino of the Agonist as my co host. How you doing, Danny? Great to be here. Super stoked. So damn stoked to be back with you. Last time we had a conversation was right before your one year anniversary. Now we are just after your two year anniversary. I had the pleasure of having a chat with Marc Andre and Alex Edier right before that. How are you doing? Let's start with just a how is today? Uh, today, uh, kind of (laughs) tired, just finishing a one week vacation. So, uh, yeah, (laughs) hopefully, uh, I'm going to have more energy for the upcoming months. (laughs) <laughs> you mentioned that last time, but you just did, you had a child. Yeah, um, the brewery is just on fire. You can't. Yeah, it's uh, crazy, crazier than ever. Yeah, unbelievable. We are recording this live at Beer Garden. Uh, talk to me about your relationship with Beer Garden uh, from A to Z. How did you hear about this festival, and how did you end up becoming involved with it? Not sure exactly the beginning of everything because I, I, I was not in charge of the the whole project. But uh, I think uh, Sebastian knows Dave. And um, yeah, we were talking about uh, festivals and stuff like that. But uh, we, we, don't, we don't have like enough beer still that we, we can't do like uh, any festivals or whatever. So uh, like smaller festival like this one, we have like a certain quantity of beer that, that like no more than that. You know, that, that, that's the perfect deal for us. That's why we, we said yes, because otherwise, uh, like unlimited beers, uh, we can't do it. What do you think about this festival? What do you think about a festival that travels? What is your opinion on Beer Garden? Uh, so far, it seems like a pretty cool concept. Uh, I really like the, the, the fact that like breweries are uh, hosting in, in their hometown, something like that. I really like that. Uh, we actually found that spot here. You found it for them? Yeah. Fucking so, cool, man. Uh, we, we wanted to do it like right in front of the brewery on the canal. Hell yeah. It's a really cool spot, but uh, the city doesn't allow us to uh, finish later. So it, it needs uh, to stop making noise at around like 9 o'clock or something. You guys are not known for being at a lot of like festivals as much. It's like more like you come to the brewery yeah, to get the beer. So this one, you were more open to, to do that kind of a thing. We, we want to do more festival in the upcoming years. Like uh, we're planning uh, an expansion next year to be able to produce a, a bit more beer. Another, right now, another uh, expansion. Yeah, another expansion. <laughs> it's, it's like it's nonstop, you know. <laughs> and, it's very uh, impressive. We, yeah, the, the problem is we don't have enough beer, for real. That's what it is. It's just yeah. purely like not enough beer. It's brewing all the time. There's that joke I was talking with uh, Marc Andre and Alex. People think that you are brewing less beer on purpose to create no, hype, to create scarcities. Um, but that's not the truth of the matter. We, uh, we actually. Have been brewing more than ever. We keep, we just can't keep up. We don't have. Uh, we we can't miss like one brew day. It's impossible. We don't have we don't have a break. We don't we don't. Uh, we we uh, we bought like ten more tanks in uh, the beginning of the spring, and we thought we would have like more beer and uh, like possibility of doing different beers. We can't. <laughs> <laughs> Here's my question. This is this is my my. Is it still fun? Are you still having it's, fun? Uh, it's not a challenge. It's not a challenge. We have a lot more employees now. Uh, we have a lot more employees in the the on the brew uh, brew brew side of the 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 place. So uh, it's kind of a challenge to. Um, to show everybody it's a bit scary almost to let go to let go of the control of your product yeah exactly <laughs> which we, i want to talk about because we're drinking one of your beers right now what is this vox and hop style but hang out with my metal friends talking about their lives music and craft beer vince is an old drummer we toured canada together of course there seems to be a <laughs> m- m- musician metal connection to everyone at, at uh, masorum <laughs> i love <laughs> pretty it pretty much what are we, we drinking uh, what are we drinking here danny 
This is uh, the Statim Fini, yeah. which is my first time having it, which I've learned is actually, uh, it's kind of a, a re it's something that's been around for a while. Yeah, we did guys. it a couple times. Yeah, well, it's great. It's it's solid. I just gave it a 425 on Untapped. Ooh. Got a rate. <laughs> but it's very Chalky, great. delicious, really, really it's, juicy. Uh, yeah, it's still really fresh. Uh, we actually canned it uh, two days ago, I think. Yeah, speaking about, you know, touring with me, doing Cross Canada as the opening act, here you are now as a brewery headlining a beer yeah. fest in your hometown. How does that feel? It's uh, it's pretty similar feel feeling <laughs> for real. Uh, like doing uh, tap takeovers, uh, festivals, stuff like that. It's uh, pretty much the same thing as doing a show, you know? We have to pack some gear. We have to, to come, like, meet er a lot of people doing interviews. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's kind of similar. It's a nice... Uh, Nice way of conti continuing. Uh, what also, we were the before. community itself. I mean, it's really diverse, but there's definitely, in my experience, it's just there's so many people in metal fans that are specifically extreme metal fans. It seems like that are really into craft beer. Absolutely, there's this huge crossover there, which is not really as existent clearly in like, let's say, uh, hip hop or some other genres of music. Well, do you have an idea of why there's such a connection between extreme music, whether it's metal or hardcore or whatever, and think, uh, craft beer? Uh, maybe the underground part of it, you know? I don't think, uh, like, we're doing, like, crazy stuff, not, like, mainstream, uh, you know? We're doing, like, a little bit like what we were doing in metal, you know? Extreme Pushing music. the limits. Yeah, we, we push the limits in the beer, too. And uh, I think it's... One of the reason why, like metalheads and uh, underground people in general, people that like complex things, yeah, <laughs> you know, like try to, to like like do something different, you know, drink something different, be special, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's my point. My point of view. Something that I I asked the boys this question when I had them on. Um, Danny just went through this, um, writing a follow up record to a hit is fucking stressful you have to do that every week every beer has to be perfect how do you deal with the stress yeah, especially when you're not in control anymore because you have people coming yeah, in yeah to brew for that, you. that's that's part of the challenge too you know we we we've set the bar high s since the beginning so for us we uh we can't we can't lower it so it's kind it's kind of we don't want to we don't want to drain beer because it's really expensive but it's it's kind of tough to uh, to keep the the same quality right now as we 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 had you know not not we had before we maintain the same quality but we can see like di little difference like when Whether I used you to brew, brew it versus exactly someone else. it's like it's like the same recipe but we don't we don't like play uh, the same way with the equipment exactly or, or it's like having a fill-in drummer exactly so sometimes it's 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 the same thing but the result is a little bit different so yeah. just trying to understand why and uh and like fix st stuff you know it's it's kind of, it's kind of our challenge right now when it comes to like the beer styles it's obvious that Misorum leans heavy into the IPA, the New England IPA, the double dry hopped IPA. This world is like their, your main thing. Yeah. However, I just had a 9% assemblage of yours, which is delicious over that had there. gin in it. And apparently something, gin or gin barrel? What, what? Yeah, we, uh, we're good friends with uh, La Société Secrète Distillery in uh, Percé. Okay, so that's where so that we came do, from. Uh, yeah, we do a lot of uh, uh, collaborations with them. So they send us like empty barrels uh, or uh, fruits that were uh, soaked in. Yeah, soaked in their uh, in their spirits. So uh, yeah. that's 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 the one. I noticed that like for the most part, when it not always, but a lot of times, it's like so. Yeah, I'd say a, a large large percentage of your beers are this IPA. Yeah. And then it's like the sours and stouts are like reserved for very like oh it's a special special thing or releases yeah you seem to be quite good at it yeah or is there an idea that you want to like not be like no, 80, uh, 90 percent IPAs the, the 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 main problem is we don't have enough beer right <laughs> so we have to do stuff that turns out quickly you know right. we wanted to uh, quick brew quick drink. Get it out get exactly because we can't we can't do something that's gonna like uh, sit in ferment say, sit in the fermenter for like a couple months you know we do now because we bought some lagering tanks 
because uh, we d we've dedicated one tank for a lagering last year, so we wanted to do it right. So a long lagering time, but uh, it, it took one fermenter for like two months. So now we we have like more flexibility in terms of lager beer. That's why we we've uh, put out more lagers uh, this summer because we, we we have like more capacity for that. But uh, we something we thought we were we would be able to do with the new tanks we got in the, in springtime, but the demand is that high. It's amazing. Like even right now, we want we really wanted to uh, like. To, to put out more stouts and more sour beers and stuff like that, but we just don't have time. It's just, That's crazy. It's uh, yeah. like now, now it starts to slow a little bit, so the upcoming months are going to be more focused on that. You know, if there was more time, more tanks, etc., was there an interest in dabbling into like the whole Belgian spectrum or anything we're like that? We, no. We're not big fans of like any of that i've been in in the beer industry for like a long time i've been brewing for like 15 years so i don't know i feel like i i i've done my my part on the old school side that i don't i don't mind drinking all the time but i don't have a challenge brewing it or i don't have like that much fun drinking it too you know, it's not like uh, it's intense taste, enough, style. I guess. Or, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's it's not something that we want to focus on. We want it to be like a, a brewery focusing on on like particular styles. We want it to be uh, up with the trends, also. So it's part of our project. So we're not we're not gonna go into uh, really classic styles. There's like a ton of breweries doing it already. They're good at it. We're not good at it. We don't, <laughs> we don't like it very much. So it, there's no point for me trying to do a beer that I'm not gonna enjoy. You know, so I'm not gonna not gonna know if it's good or not. You know, because I don't like it that much. One last question: Brewing took away your passion of music and drums. Yeah, <laughs> has it come back a little bit recently? Last time we spoke, you said you hadn't been playing in a long time. Um, do you still listen to metal? If you are still listening to metal, what? have you been listening to that excites you uh i haven't listened to metal in a while actually uh we uh because in the brewery the sound resonates so much that we have to uh we have to play music that is really like slow keep it and, simple uh, right? yeah really simple uh more bass and highs and stuff like that so a lot of like most of the time it's hip-hop that's playing so we don't i don't know man I'm. Uh, I guess I'm uh, getting older. <laughs> and, uh, I don't. I don't listen to metal. Like, not anymore. But I not as much as before. Not actively. But at not the time, actively. at the time that you were and you were into, was it more like a uh, hardcore, a death metal? Uh, no, I was more more of a death metal guy, and uh, like uh, I think last album I really really liked is uh, from Revocation. Hell yeah. I don't remember the the title or you guys your last EP man the last uh, the, the book last, of suffering uh, yeah man the last song with the fucking blast beat yeah. for like thirty seconds yeah. I was like <laughs> yeah <laughs> but yeah extreme Amazing. stuff like extreme the beer stuff. flavors yeah. yeah absolutely Vince thank you so so much for taking the time having a chat with me and Danny here at Beer Garden I really really appreciated it cheers cheers guys cheers. Hey, what's up, everyone? Today, I'm with Max Bergeron of Hello, BG everyone. Brasserie Urbaine. Very stoked to be with you. I got Danny Marino, my co-host, with me. How are you doing today? We're recording this at Beer Garden Montreal. Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, really, it's really a nice spot here. Uh, it's, it's cool by the water, and we're really happy to be here. I'm here with Matt uh, and Tom, uh, two of my guys. So uh, amazing! You personally, have I'm starting to get a little toasty. <laughs> it's, the th <laughs> it's the third interview. <laughs> I'm fresh. I did not expect so many high ABV beers on the menu. It's like nine percent, eleven percent, twelve percent. I'm like, okay. Max has something special for us. What? What is this? What are we gonna drink, Max? Uh, this is uh, it's called uh, Apicole uh, Tranquille uh, Gin Barrel Age. So basically, uh, it's a monster. Uh, it's about uh, twelve percent alcohol. And this beer <laughs> That's is what uh, I'm talking about. <laughs> it's, made, <laughs> it's made with uh, you know uh, wild culture, uh, mixed culture. Uh, 
that we drank from from a beer from Jester King when <laughs> really? we, we were there, and we mix it with uh, we blend it with our own uh, our own culture, and we just put it on a, a, a huge amount of raw honey. So the, the honey is not uh, filtered, it's not uh, you know uh, pasteurized, and there there's almost like parts of bees into the <laughs> into the, the the honey. So we just let it ferment for a couple months, and then we took that beer and we put it into uh, smaller barrels of gin uh, of the distillery uh, just next door. Uh, so it's called uh, Apicole Tranquille because this version is more like a, a wild hydromel and wild beer, and it's it's going you know it's going next level to the beer. Uh, it's, it's become more like a, a orange wine. Very interesting. So this is why we keep the we kept the beer like flat, almost flat, to keep the the, the the orange wine side on this beer. Fantastic! Let's pour it out. Gorgeous, gorgeous color. Beautiful. So as you can see, it's very low carb. Yeah. Uh, this is wanted. It's like a light, deep yellow, almost orange. Gorgeous. Cheers. It looks it looks like liquid honey nice to be here with you guys absolutely now i got to talk about your barrel aging program what interests me really about your brewery is the level at which things have been taken to the next level what happened there you guys went from being a brewery and i say this without being i'm trying with all respect a beer that would be at a grocery store yeah to exactly. something next level exactly. what what happened there what was the thought process with that Uh, you know, uh, Brasserie Générale. Uh, now we 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 are called BG Brasserie Urbaine. Uh, it's it's more representative of what we are right now, uh, and what we do. You know, because uh, the the Brasserie Générale was uh, Brasserie Générale is eight years old, and among uh, you know the the, the owners, uh, there's only one left of the four original owners. So we want to reappropriate, you know, uh, our own brand. And our own philosophy, so this is why uh, we we rebrand uh, over the last uh, years and a half, uh, the last year and a half uh, over the the BG Brasseur brand, uh, brand, and we uh, at, at the same time we just you know uh, put some beer off the market and put new beers uh, on the market with a new brand with the new labels made with the uh, Romain Lassar. I was gonna spring him up. Yeah. I love his artwork. <laughs> I know, I know you. Yeah. You, you love uh, you love Romain, and uh, I love uh, I love to work with him because he's really funky, and he, he get it. He, he get us, and we we work together. Really, you know, it's just just exciting and fun. Uh, about our barrel age program, uh, it's something that was existing, but we just scaled the the, the whole thing a little bit down to uh, to concentrate and to focus more on uh, what we could produce uh, like what do we we really want to produce like with this beer the the objective was like uh, okay we we want to taste the honey like the the raw honey something really uh, like a farmer's or farmer beer uh, so we, we focus on the whole thing so we just from the beginning of the project we just focus on this whole objective So the, we this is a change of philosophy, I think, because uh, before we were like uh, producing like eight barrels of a beer and we were blending it together and put it on the market with a higher volume and that kind of stuff. And it it was okay sometimes, but sometimes you know the beer was not on point. But right now we we don't we don't hesitate to discard some barrels and just throw it to the drain and like wow. we, we just focus on uh, yeah quality and experience because we we want to have a, an experience on the label. And we we want to focus on the, on the, the you know the the whole uh, the whole tasting. It seems like you guys are taking a lot of old world beer style brewing and then taking it to like this new modern place and really experimenting in different taking that blend and putting it like together. There's a lot of like the wild fermentation and uh, barrel aging and flavors at least that I'm tasting in this and the and the other one you had me taste before that are like. It reminds me of certain European, Belgian, etc. type breweries, but then with a twist that's like not a Europe, like a North American twist. Yeah, like take modernized twist on that. Yeah, because uh, I do have a lot of respect for you know uh, for uh, the old world, you know, breweries. Like uh, I really enjoy like Tilkay and uh, Trifontenen and uh, you know all those uh, those uh, gurseries. And uh, so this is why we don't hesitate, you know 
just to uh, to drag from the best brewery we find and the best bottle we find and to reproduce the yeast and put it into our barrel age program and then uh, we put it into Pancheon. Uh, Pancheon is like a, a bigger um, like a bigger barrel. Uh, most of the barrels are like 200 liters, but uh, Pancheon are like 500 liters, uh, and they are used by Belgian uh, beer producer because uh, there's less wood contact and it's just less uh, manipulation. Uh, so we can focus on you know having a 500 liters of of uh, one particular uh, mix of, uh, of yeast and, and bacteria. So this is our change of philosophy. We just, you know, uh, if, if we like, if we put like 200 liters of that one panchéon and with like those two panchéon and they just mix it, to, to bring the, the, the to bring the beer to uh, to the level we want to explore. Very interesting. Let's talk about beer garden. What's going on right here? What what is your experience with beer garden? How did you first hear about it? How did you end up making beers and bringing them here to Montreal for this event? Okay, uh, we we've been invited by uh, by Gab uh, Gab from uh, Mizoram, and we we thank him for for that. Very cool. So it's a hand curated event by the headliner Mizoram. I think that they were uh, they, they are the the, the the host brewery so they, they just put breweries on the lineup and i i really uh, really appreciate that he, you know he invite us on the lineup of montreal which is one of the i think the biggest uh, edition uh, <laughs> so uh, we're really proud of that and um, you know beer garden is just a new event of this year and when when you heard of the uh, the you know how, how it's how it's working what what is the focus of the beer garden yeah, it was just I, I want to be there, you know. <laughs> I find it really cool, like a, uh, a bus that you know just uh, drive around different city of Quebec and just put some uh, killer lineup. So when we arrived there in Montreal, uh, we just want you know to be at the, at the level where we put some killer beer to the lineup, like uh, with the Lise de Marie uh, Bourbon Barrel Age, and uh, we pop uh, we just crack some magnums of uh, Apical that will be released. Uh, on the 16 October uh, in Quebec City, so we are preparing our uh, eighth anniversary. So it's just a, a big. Uh, we'll make it a big event for Quebec City. You might see me there. <laughs> <laughs> you may just see me there, people, and some other friendly faces. <laughs> talk to me about it. It's Vox and Hops. We have to talk about metal. Do you have any experience with metal? What um, What do you think about metal? Have you ever listened to metal? Have you ever ended up in a mosh pit? What is your experience with metal? Yeah, my experience of metal, uh, I, you know, I, I won't lie, I'm not uh, a huge metal fan, uh, but uh, when I was younger, I was really m much more into uh, punk, punk rock, and really old school punk rock. So, but I had a lot of friends, you know, with, uh, you know, that were from different, you know, uh, musical tastes, because when you're young, you identify yourself to, you know, your, your musical taste. And, uh, you know, honestly, uh, <laughs> it's kind of, uh, it's kind of, uh, I don't, I could not say boring, but uh, the metal band I've, you know, uh, watched more often in shows was like uh, Monoxage and Anonymous. I think I've been there for like 10 times, uh, man, but you know, I, I just like those guys. The Anonymous are, are doing like killer, killer like music. But there's a clear, with those bands though, it makes sense in a way because there's a clear punk influence in Absolutely. those metal bands. It's, yeah. it's metal, but it's yeah. obvious the punk influence there, so... Makes sense why you react to that. Every time I'm discussing, you know, with, with my with friends about you know music and my friends that likes you know metal more than I do, you know, they they, they just explain me the the whole world and it's it seemed to be like exactly a, a whole world apart, you know, and this is kind of. Uh, I don't know. People there's are, there's probably as many or more metal styles than beer styles. So this is this is fun now. Hold on. If uh, <laughs> the Agonis was a beer style, and if Cryptopsy was a beer style, what would they be, Danny? <laughs> Crypt Cryptopsy <laughs> would be a. a Imperial Stout. Okay. There's, there's no doubt, I think, <laughs> that it would be a very high ABV Imperial Stout, like a Dark Lord kind of... <laughs> I think Agonist would be an assemblage, okay. because it's an assemblage of styles. That's true. 
It's it jumps around a lot. That's true. From all it's death metal, and then all of a sudden it's like super melodic. Yeah. And like almost like jazzy poppy melodies, and then uh, oh now it's like a hardcore. There's like a <laughs> so there's a lot of shit going on, and it, and so it's maybe that's not for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing, Max. One last question. It probably doesn't happen to you very often because uh, you're a father of a young baby. Um, you know you're busy working at the brewery, but every once in a while it happens to everyone. What is is your hangover cure? Uh, I guess it's you know we eat, uh, eat a lot. No, I have to <laughs> eat a lot. You have to you have to eat a lot of healthy food, or you have to eat a lot of garbage food. Yeah, no Which healthy food. Healthy. Yeah. Oh, really? Re- re- that's, no, that's, that's the first time I've heard that. No, man, healthy and you know sometimes like just I have to eat the whole day, like not not just like big portions, but. I have to always get something into the, the, the stomach, so <laughs> and I feel you know sometimes like uh, I'm, I'm not proud, I'm kind of tired and hangover, and I feel like oh yeah, I really I really need to eat the vegetables, and I will feel alive. <laughs> like, Put some healthy nutrients. <laughs> yeah, into yeah you. something, and then I the nutrition about it uh, and came method. Back an hour later, amazing, <laughs> Max. Thank you so so much hanging out with me, Danny, here at Beer Garden. It was a true true pleasure. Cheers. Cool. Cheers, guys. Hey, what's up, everyone? Today I'm with Keegan Colertis of Four Origins and Drew Stevens from Kanawaki Brewing. Yeah. I have my co-host for this very special Beer Garden Montreal experience, Danny Marino, the Agonist. Boys, how are you doing? Yo, great. Good. Yeah, great. Good, good, great good. day. Great weather too. It's perfect. Perfect weather. This is cool. I'm having a blast. Personally. Excellent. I'm so happy to have you with me. The weather's me. great in the Bang Bus here too. <laughs> I like it. We are very it lucky at Beer up. Garden. We have a very cool uh, private bus where I can conduct my interviews. I think that's very cool of them. Uh, let's talk about Beer Garden. Let's go straight to it. First, Drew, what did you brew for this event? Yeah. So we we had to make a clutch decision on what we're going to bring. Uh, we brewed two beers for it, but we brought one. Uh, this is a Brett uh, Saison that uh, Matt and Keegan are both drinking right now. Brett Saison uh, that has been barrel aged in red wine barrels on uh, various strains of Brett. And then we added some mango to it. Um, yeah, just to, to fine it out and round it out a little bit. Um, and it's uh, sitting at 10%. It's uh, dangerously delicious. Super dangerous delicious. So <laughs> I've never heard of a Saison Brett at 10%. That's like, that's kind of cool. Because yeah. usually it's like six max. Yeah, so th- this was done with, uh, with a decent amount of honey in it, a decent amount of spelt. Uh, so just to give it a little bit of character. But the honey definitely dries it out and drives up the, uh, the alcohol. Which is what we're here for. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to me about Beer Garden. Uh, what are we drinking? There's a mystery beer going on with uh, Drew and Danny right now. Yeah, mystery beer. We have to guess what it is. It's IPA, Pale Ale, Lager, or Hellas, which is contradictory because <laughs> Hellas is a motherfucking lager. Oh, well, but anyways. well, then it's either Lager or Hellas. I already had a sip. Okay, sorry. so it's definitely a lager. But, yeah. um, <laughs> and I forget what the other things are, but... Um, yeah, so we have to fill out a form, but anyway. <laughs> is it a is it a hoppy lager? You could win a Kanawaki Brewing T-shirt. No, no, a beer garden T-shirt. <laughs> oh, nobody wants our shit. Oh, I. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, Keegan, you you came here because we're just so damn close to your yeah, brewery. Yeah, yeah, two minutes talk, away. Talk to me about when you found out that there'd be a very cool exclusive beer fest steps away from Four Origins. Well, I follow the the beer garden uh, Instagram and Facebook. I guess like most most people, and I found out that Drew was going to be here too. So uh, I called up Dave and Marc Andre, and they came to the brewery. Or Marc Andre came to the brewery, and I met Dave here, uh, and we chatted. And it was we were going to do like uh, they were going to announce for people that come to see us after the. The beer garden was done after yes. the session, so I was pretty awesome with them. Very cool. Uh, I'd like to hear about your relationship. Uh, when did you guys meet? How long have you known each other? Uh, how we hate that? each other. <laughs> We're like, we've been rivals for so long. Who's I was better? just going to say that we every now and then we do rub beards, and it's kind of like Velcro. <laughs> Uh, I got like the little wiry things, and he's got like the fuzz. You know? Uh, <laughs> how do we know each other? From Stu. Yeah, Stu. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Your own I wife. Yeah. You know? <laughs> uh, so me, me, and, uh, me and Keegan's wife went to high school together. And really? We're friends after high school. And then, uh, and then Keegan. I don't even know uh, this story. 
fornicated I, with our friends. So, <laughs> uh, so now we are friends. And now we're friends. <laughs> yeah. Via fornication. Via, via fornication, yeah. Um, but yeah, so yeah. And then uh, Keegan was starting a brewery and then... I guess not too long after I, I started one just because I had to copy him. Well, you, you, <laughs> you opened up before we did. I know. Yeah, you rushed it. Like, but you are not going to open before me. No. And you did it. Hell no. It was yeah. good, man. Something that I find interesting. We're, uh, we're a month apart, though. A bit, a bit of a picky. Yeah. It makes no. I've asked this question early in the podcast about being from the English music scene or the French music scene. And throughout the course of the podcast I stopped asking the question because there is no difference is there a difference being a primary anglophone brewery versus the majority of them which are francophone I don't think so I mean we we uh, most of our staff is francophone um, we have a lot of anglophones too but um, no th- I wouldn't say there's a big difference no I think our position is a little bit different since we're on the territory and people predominantly think that it's, it is Anglophone, which they're not wrong. Um, and then, so that for us, it was like an uphill battle to kind of educate people that we do have quality products and not just cheap cigarettes. Um, <laughs> and, then, and then we just don't all speak English, but we also have people on the staff that speak French. So, um, yeah, I mean, for us, I guess it was like an uphill battle, but it doesn't really like dictate like what we're trying to do, you know, in terms of like brewing beer, making beer, and uh, trying to be, you know, trying to trying to do good stuff. So, I mean, we all grew up bilingual too, so it's like I think it's just a matter of it's like the, the music scene too. It's like you you come up together from the same scene as teenagers and whatever. So there's a community already established among your community, so that might help in that like some brewers already were all friends before they started their breweries and then so they feed off each other a little bit but i mean fine and once you're established like these guys or other it's at, at that point it doesn't really matter anymore i guess uh, let's talk about collaborations let's talk about working with other breweries what's the funnest thing of bringing people together uh how do collabs come to life um i guess there's various ways that it could happen um I don't know. Have you guys done a beer together? We've tried we're, multiple we're, times. We're, we're, yeah, so we're working so, on so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. do it right <laughs> now. Actually, it let's has, do it right now. We what actually need come, somebody to decide the style for okay, us. Okay, we're doing we this right arguing. now. So, okay, what it. beer are we all going to make? It's funny because it did come up uh, today. Yeah. Actually, what the hell are we brewing? Because we did meet what two weeks ago, yeah. a week ago at least. Yeah. Uh, and we're just trying to nail down some ideas. But, so uh, why did it fail? Why did it fall it apart? It hasn't failed. We just <laughs> haven't really figured out what exactly we're going to do. We haven't, you know, because, I mean, you could fall in the trap of, like, let's just do, like, another hazy pale ale or a hazy IPA or whatever. Um, or we could do something like, um, I don't know, you know, piss town downs or whatever like that. You know, like, let's put a buttload of fruit in something or whatever like that. But I think I think we're just kind of... We want something that represents both breweries, or at least maybe that's something that, that I look for is like trying to bring in elements of, of both breweries when we do a collaboration. Um, so I think you know we're we're trying to we're trying to figure that. You got to find out. those differences. So it's like it's like what or, or what is it that he you know, that like, they do that you don't do? You know what I mean? And yeah. then think like okay, well, that's yeah. different, and then. What do we do that you don't? You I feel like a lot from, well, no, from an outsider's guys, perspective, yeah. I see you guys as a more classic style brewery. Yeah, yeah, we're very. Classic. You guys, so you, don't, you, guys you, you only made your first hazy last year. Yeah. Whereas Drew was probably making some you of the first haze yeah. in Quebec before any of the haze yeah. lords that you are there now. You guys go hard in the paint with like the. Um, like leveraging tea and like yeah. other yeah. like uh, nuance, uh, like odd ingredients. We love nuancing, tea. We love botanicals. Uh, nuancing yeah. different ingredients in those beers. So I, I think that's maybe that's like a kind of direction that we got to go into too. Man, we're figuring it out. Yes. Yes. I like it. The yeah, hazy like tea it. bag. The We've got it. Hazy tea bag. <laughs> <laughs> sounds, a haze bag. sounds like my last Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> I do think that's interesting that you guys are more classic. Your first haze last year, 
you always experimenting. You dabbled with smoothies this past summer. Uh, mangoes I, and who knows what. Mangoes and shit. in, in yeah. a Brett saison. Uh, but we do like our classic stuff. I mean, we do like the classic yeah, lagers. Nice we do that. We like, like our, nice you know, we do an ESB, which is a very classic style that like not too many people do anymore. Um, uh, I think I think that's like a commonality between both of our breweries is that we will go to like we'll do those. You know, you guys got a, a great porter too. Um, you guys got the. Uh, I just had that actually. Pumpkin the, the pumpkin ha- Halloween one. I, 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 I wanted. I wanted to open up those do- that door right now. Nice. Um, team Pumpkin, obviously. We're Team Four Pumpkin. One hundred percent are the kings of pumpkin beers in Quebec. Um, how do you yeah. feel about pumpkin yeah. beers, Drew? We're coming on the second one. I'm not a pumpkin one. beer fan, and I don't really have any any like any shade to to, to cast on on pumpkin beers. It's just that it's you have to love that that Thanksgiving pumpkin pie taste, spice yeah. taste. You know, if you don't like it, you hate it. It's just yeah. like there's not you know really my, an in between. My grandmother died at, at Thanksgiving, so maybe that's why it's sour. Oh yeah, that that's I just lied. Not fun. She didn't die. <laughs> I just wanted to bring some darkness in. <laughs> but, but why so strong on the pumpkin? You have a pumpkin fest. Who loves the pumpkins? Yeah, at four? Well, got Mike, a pumpkin Mike, Mike is obsessed with pumpkins. Okay. <laughs> Mike is obsessed he with pumpkins. He loves everything about pumpkins. He enjoys. I think one of the first. <laughs> one of the first beer. I think. Uh, Elysian really uh, influenced him. Yes, he, he, he told me that when I had pumpkin, him on, on yeah, my podcast. Yeah. From Elysian, and then from ever since he tasted that beer, he's like, "I want to make pumpkin beers all the time." <laughs> and we're like, "No, you have one month. Uh, make it happen in that month, and then you're good." Because after Halloween, nobody, like, wants, nobody wants to touch pumpkin beers. So like, you have to sell in it. The, it's bigger in the, in the window. states. Yeah, it's Ca- big in Canada's states. like they don't get it, but in the states, there's a lot of pumpkin yeah. beers that are like year round. Oh yeah. Yeah, and like they start launching their pumpkin beers early August, right? And, you know, we're launching it like now, it's mid September, so which is even earlier, a little you, bit earlier yeah. than you have in we're the past. We're going earlier, which is and smart. Earlier. Yeah, it's I really was just smart. on yeah. Whispers of the Void, your sister channel. Yeah, I guess. Shout, shout out to Philip and Evan from Whispers of the Void. But Evan was drinking a. He just finished up his pumpkin beer when we got started, and I'm like, pumpkin beer. <laughs> Who the fuck has a pumpkin beer before <laughs> September? <you know? laughs> but I think Mike was harassing him for a bit to try to do a collab. He did want to do a pumpkin and, beer, and he was like, "I, I no, kind of said no, no." no. no. But well, it's okay. We made our own. We called out with ourselves. But you do, you guys do a great job. Like uh, Nightmare yeah, is yeah. always a, a great one. Yeah, Nightmare is awesome. I love Quebec it too. based pumpkin beer by far. It's, yeah, it's, it's great. It's really super solid. complex, yeah. but super awesome. Absolutely. And we're gonna come out with a pumpkin spice latte because nice. we had to. Yes. The P- <laughs> the PSL. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's coming up next? Something big. I know for you, Keegan. You guys just announced that you're expanding into the West Island. Yeah. So a brand new facility. Yeah. I think that's super ambitious, exciting, absolutely uh, scary. Um, Very. What prompted that? And, uh, <laughs> it's not scary at all. No. I want another brewery in my neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> so that always, Danny yeah, it's will good be for there. a lot of people. No, I, I mean, uh, we ran out of space, which was the primary reason. Like, we just didn't have enough tanks. We couldn't. We we're in a super small. I mean, the brewery itself with the taproom is pretty big, but when you just calculate the brewing square footage, it's super tiny. And then we miscalculated the warehousing space we needed. And then COVID kind of accentuated that problem with every everything cans. went into cans. So, and then we're like the government's cracking down on the on the labels. So now everything's kind of going into print. So you have to order those ahead of time. Anyway, if you go to our tap room now, like half of it is pallets of cans and wow. finished product too. So, and we didn't have our own canning line. Yeah, that was a major expense and a major problem because we couldn't rely on their schedule anymore. Uh, it's we were spending a hundred grand a year in, in canning fees just to filling, and a canning line itself is like eighty ninety thousand. So we're wow. like, man, we just need the space to do it. But you need to build like its own like drainage area, like its own walls. Because it's you messy as it goddamn covered. hell. Yeah. Oh yeah. So those are the two big reasons, uh, and we're also getting a lot into sours, which if you have a third holding tank. It makes it a lot easier to make sours. So there was all these things coupled together that were like, let's let's just do it. And a lot of our customers actually came from the West Island for some reason. Uh, so it was the next logical spot for us to go. And there was a lot of buildings available back then. Now there's practically nothing. And we'll be right next to the REM, which is awesome. 
Very smart. Yeah. So sources and uh, and Hymus. Genius. Wow. Yeah. That's really close to where I live. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, like, that's even closer than Labras is to my place. Uh, Sorry, Beauty. Troy. Sorry, Troy. No, no, I didn't do it on purpose, Troy. <laughs> boner. A West Island boner. Yeah. Dan's actually coming to the brewery on Monday from Labras to it's hang amazing. out a bit. Uh, So it's already set lab. up? Yep. Oh, oh wow. really? So it's open. Wow. No, it's not. Well, it's not the done bruise, yet. The brew system's in. Yeah, the brew system's in. Like most of the piping's all done. Uh, they just got to do the control panel. And then we should be brewing by early October. That's amazing. Yeah, so we'll have a bottle shop at the same time, uh, which is like in the front area of the brewery, so on Hymus. And then next year we'll have a tap room restaurant. Fantastic. Yes, sir. How about you, Drew? Well, we just pulled the trigger on, on a much bigger, uh, much faster canning line. So we're going to be going to harden the paint on that. And then uh, and also... Uh, yeah, just just banging out some some. Uh, we want to get a little bit more diversity. We're kind of burning through uh, our uh, our collection of uh, of labels that we have. <laughs> so <laughs> we kind of just need to get rid get through that before we start coming out with some new stuff. But um, yeah, we're we're excited about getting that that new canning line. That's going to be a big step for us. And and then uh, we're looking at getting some more tanks in there and all that stuff. And sweet, you guys have a lot of space back there, though. Uh yeah, but it goes fast, you know. Yeah, yeah. Can you put triples in there, or we're we're looking at that. Uh, okay. I'm even contemplating putting some of like our, you know, like the the one to one. Uh, like we have a seven barrel brewing system, so we have a couple of we have five seven barrel fermenters, maybe doubling those up to fifteens. Wow. Um, and then you know being able to get get that stuff out there and doing more Chris Topsy. A lot a lot of people always asking for Chris Topsy, so. That's coming in the next couple of weeks. Excellent. Nice. Yeah. A new batch of cold haze, warm blood. Too. We we also <laughs> have people throwing eggs at us daily about <laughs> about that. Um, as soon as we were, as soon as the inventory was getting low, they were already like, "When's the next one coming?" You're, you're so, on your way to becoming an exclusive Cryptopsy Brewing Company. We, we might as well just name ourselves like Cryptopsy <laughs> Brewing <laughs> Company instead of Canada. Was this? We have lots and lots of ideas, and Drew is always open to great, great collab yeah. ideas. Yeah, we got a lot of collabs coming up too, and even a lot of people from out of town. So we're excited to get get that going. Out of the province or out of out of the uh, province? Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. Good for you. So we're, we're excited to get that going. and Amazing. Is that you going out of province or them coming in? No, them coming in. Okay, so very cool. We'll, we'll, get a, we'll get flavors from, from outside of the province coming in. So we're, we're, we're happy about that. Very yeah. exciting. Uh, I know your metal journey, Drew. I know you're a metalhead. Keegan, do you have any experience being a metalhead? Have you ever listened to metal? Have you ever been in a mosh pit? Have you ever listened to metal? Do you, What is your metal story? Uh, I'm going to have to say no. To <laughs> I'm more of an acoustic uh, guitar player. Uh, I, I play guitar. That's uh, cool. I played piano when I was younger, but no metal for me, unfortunately. When I've never been in a mosh pit. I'm scared shitless of a mosh pit. I will not go in a mosh pit. <laughs> Just it all I, I, I don't even go into a mosh pit. I'm too okay. old for that shit now. Man. Yeah, I will I will not make it out of the mosh pit. When I you see a guy with like a big beard, and it, it's like it's one of two things. He's either a metalhead. I you know it's like acoustic folk, like and yeah. like. You, know. you, got, you have to look at his footwear after that, though. You That's see his true. shoes, and you look at his footwear, it's like hmm. yeah. If he, yeah. Shoes. <laughs> yeah. if he has the if he has the New Balance shoes, <laughs> he's a metalhead, though. That's a dad shoe. You know, I, I, I you know he's a dad when he has the New Balance shoes. They're, point, they're yeah. pointing at my feet. Yeah. <laughs> at least I'm not wearing Crocs, boys, because that, that's, uh, that, yeah, that, that, that could have happened. All the way. Yeah. <laughs> Especially the Crocs from Giant Tiger. <laughs> <laughs> but who should I start out with if I wanted to get into metal? The Agonist and, no. Cri- and Cryptopsy. Those are not, those are not gateway bands. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not Cryptopsy. Yeah. Definitely not Cryptopsy. Yeah, <laughs> the Agonist is a, is a, is a good closer, starting point. Yes, yeah, yeah, closer. Yeah, yeah. Easier to there's handle. There's some clean vocals. For sure. There's some melody. Yeah. Uh, there's some groove. Are we allowed to say Slipknot? Is that like Slipknot a, is Slipknot. Yeah. I like Slipknot. Have you, not, so have you never heard Slipknot even? I've listened to Slipknot. Oh, okay. yeah. so I have no problem with Slipknot. I was a new metal child. Okay. I'm not I'm not ashamed to say that. I've said it many times in the first podcast. Slipknot album is one of the best ever. Hell yeah. The first album. Is that $3 so awesome. bill, y'all? No. <laughs> <laughs> we'll wrap this up one last question. <laughs> Let's wrap this up. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, I know that was. One it might happen fuckers. tomorrow because <laughs> we're drinking far too many high ABV beers. Oh my god! Let's go around. I'm the almost table. done my bracelet here. Let's so. go around the table <laughs> and let's uh, declare what our hangover cures are. We already talked about this. Yeah, we already asked me this. Re- refer to uh, episode two hundred two, I think. No, one ninety eight. A 198, I think. 198, yeah. yeah. I, I, I wasn't it, quite you, it might have evolved, though, because hangover cures changed with time. No, it hasn't changed. <laughs> Keegan, what do you do when you're hungover? Either I have McDonald's and a lot of water or Gatorade, or I just keep on drinking. Danger. Yeah. yeah. yeah uh, my answer remains the same. You just got to power through it. Drink some coffee and then just suffer, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I asked you when I had you on Thursday, Thursday. I, I think that it just, it comes down to coming, uh, having a bit of booze again, pretty much. Yeah, like, man. I, I'll, I'll end up back there, even if I. It's like coffee, like you said. Like, all right, coffee and water and food. Nothing's working. All right, booze. And spe- <laughs> actually, you know what? Specifically, not beer, booze. Like, really? Yeah, but not a lot. Just like one drink, like a, like a, a Caesar or like something like that. Caesar's good. Yeah, I've heard yeah, that. Yeah, you know, yeah. just like one drink with like two ounces in it or something like that. That'll set you straight. I was for working a few at a hours. bar when I was younger, and the guys would have uh, half beer, half clamato. Ah, in I the saw, morning. I've seen that. Right. Yeah, yeah, like, like 11. Michelada or something they call it. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it is. That's what it is. Never had it, but it doesn't look I good. I mean, essentially, it's just salt. That's the. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's what it is. Salt and carbohydrate, like uh, carbs. For myself, yeah. I uh, suffer in silence. And uh, if I have like a fruited sour on hand, I'll go towards that. Sour? A sour? That's, that's fruited the last sour. kind of beer. Okay. I yeah. The acidity yeah. wouldn't like, <laughs> make the, it The worse. last thing I want when I'm hungover <laughs> is orange juice, so I can't even <laughs> think about fruit sour. Yeah. Some reason give me, it seems give me to that. Is there a some like, nutrients? Wow. So it sounds like you're at Brewski like every second day. <laughs> this, is how brutal, this is how brutal juice came to life. So. Oh, there's <laughs> coffee in it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Coffee and a fruited sour. Keegan, Drew, yes, sir. Danny, thank you so much hanging out Cheers, with me, nice, uh, talking about life, metal craft, beer, You're kicking and us beer out? garden. Well, I'm going to stop recording. We're going to keep hanging out, but we're not with people listening. This is a true pleasure. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. 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 Hey, thank you all so, so much for listening right to the end. You know that I love and appreciate that. Man, the Danny and I and the rest of the Vox and Hops crew have such a blast at Beer Garden. If you want to take a little bit of a deeper look into what our experience at Beer Garden was like, you can check it out in the description of this podcast. I have put a link to the Vox and Hops Beer Garden wrap-up video, which was created by Chris Kells of The Agonist. We had such a good time. There is one more Beer Garden experience happening in Gatineau, Quebec coming up in a few weeks. If you would like to go to that event, I have put the link for you to be able to purchase tickets in the description of this podcast. I would go if I were you. Now, if you enjoyed this Vox and Hops episode, you should sign up to the Vox and Hops Metal Podcast mailing list. You can do that on my website, voxandhops.com. That's V-O-X-A-N-D-H-O-P-S dot com. And when you do that, you shall receive one email a week containing all of the details of everything that has happened throughout the past week in the world of the Vox and Hops Metal Podcast. There's a whole lot going on in the world of the Vox and House Metal Podcast, I would hate for you to miss a single thing, so do me a favor and sign up to that mailing list. The Vox and Hops Metal Podcast is brought to you by Sound Talent Media. I hope you have a glorious weekend. I will be back next week with one episode on Tuesday, but until then, remember to enjoy life, metal, and craft beer. Cheers, Vox and Hops heads. 